is pen and ink with watercolor. All right, fairly simple, fairly straightforward. You're using two different media. So you're going to select one of the four skulls. All right, same process to get it onto the watercolor paper. Graphite the back with the graphite stick. Okay, lay it down. Once you have the graphite on, lay it down on the white piece of paper. Draw in the contour separations, the areas of highlight and shadow. Then apply either of these two pen and ink techniques based on the values. So in this case, I chose to do stippling. So any area of value, I did it with dots, all dots. Now, the easiest way to get large areas of black when you're doing the stippling technique is by using the pen in small figure eights because you can see how this area doesn't have a solid black. When you have the dots in a compressed small area to make black, instead of just coloring it in, the idea of the dots really makes it go so that you end up just with the black dots creating the area of value. For example, if I'm trying to recreate an area of black or almost black, what I'm going to do is, instead of, let me zoom in here, instead of trying to do a billion jillion dots to make black, if I do tight little figure eights like this, tiny little scribbles and scumbled scribbled lines, right? That gives me almost the same thing, and you see how fast I did that, than if I create the same size area of black with dots. All right, that took me far less time, and it looks pretty much the same. Now, as I get out, let's say this black transitions, like it does here, transitions into a lighter or a medium tone. Instead of continuing that scribble, then I would take the dots and start to blend them out from the edge of that scribbled area and transition the dots to create the values as I need them. All right. The other option you have instead of just stippling is hatching and cross-hatching. So I did all the values on this one based on the contours and I did hatching and curved cross-hatching small areas, thin areas, just by using the thin pen. The same thing, black areas, obviously it's just by adding more lines closer together, following the contours of the skull to recreate the accurate values with hatching and cross-hatching. When I'm done with all of the pen techniques, either the stippling or cross-hatching hatching, I'm going to use watercolor, and I'm going to create a interest, an area of interest based on the types of effects that I use with washes. All right, and this one I did a warm color wash. So I have oranges and red oranges in the darkest areas. And then I have transitions with highlights with yellow on the skull. Here I did warm versus cool. So I did warm and cool in the background, warm on the skull. And then I did this cool dripping effect. You could do spatter technique. You could do alcohol. You could do any of the watercolor techniques that we did uh, up to this point, and you create a really interesting uh, skull for that. All right, so pen and ink, and then once the pen and ink is done, you add the watercolor on top.